Hi everybody. My name is Angie Hotz. I'm a birth doula and a childbirth educator here in Kitsap County, Washington. And tonight for my childbirth education class, the thing that the project that we're going to do is called the baby project. We're going to build a baby. Really simple things to use. I get most of my stuff like the supplies at craft store, Target, dollar store, super easy stuff. Okay. This is our baby. We're going to have a baby, a placenta, amniotic sacs, and an umbilical cord, and we're going to tape it all together. We're going to duct tape it all together because duct tape. Okay, this is the printout of the baby. If you have a better <laughs> drawing of the baby, please feel free. This is the one that was given to me at my childbirth education class when I became a teacher. That's how I learned about this. But I've already cut out my baby to save time for this. We have red and blue yarn, just red and blue yarn, red heart brand. So that is for our two arteries and vein for the umbilical cord. We have four gallon small trash bags. This is the nice brand. I think I got it at Winco, maybe Target, but four gallon, that's the important part. Scissors, $1 scissors at uh, Dollar Tree is where I get them. The Betty Crocker ones are super sharp. Just so you know. Sponges, these come in two packs. I, this is the placenta, right? Um, sometimes they have different colors. Sometimes they, you know, have different brands. It just depends on what they have at the dollar store, but that's our sponge and then duct tape, lots of fun duct tape. And it's always interesting to see like what people choose to see what their tastes are. It just, it gives you kind of a glimpse into what people like. So I try and have a, a variety. I think we will go with glamper vans or whales. I think we'll go, we'll go with whales. Pacific Northwest and all, right? Okay. So we have our stuff, our equipment. We would, first of all, I would hand out scissors to everybody. Second of all, we would cut out our baby. I've already cut out my baby to save time. Next, we're gonna pass around the yarn for our umbilical cord. So Ava is how I remember it, artery, vein, artery. So two arteries um, and a vein. Red is our vein, this blue is our artery. Umbilical cords are about 22 inches long is the average. They can be really long and they can be quite short. Like I've seen a variety of them. 22 inches is about average. And the easiest way to do that, as far as this goes, is just arm's length. Just hold it out arm's length. Nothing has to be exact. I mean, we're taping stuff together with duct tape and trash bags. So it's the idea, it's the idea behind it. And it's the conversation that this brings up. It's always great conversation. Okay, two arteries and a vein. Okay. Inside the umbilical cord, the umbilical cord is kind of like a sausage, like a skinny sausage. There's the outside sheath and then the two arteries and a vein and then that is filled in with Wharton's jelly. Wharton's jelly is what keeps it taut. Sometimes you'll see it coiled around like a like an old school foam cord, you know, real tight curly. Sometimes it has little nodules. Sometimes it's like a little curly and then straight and a little curly. There's so much variation. But in order to do this project, this doesn't represent it well because they're not together. So what we would do is tie a knot at one end and then we would braid it, which is nice because usually one of the parents will hold it and the other one braids and we talk and, and socialize, you know, while we're doing this. So that part's kind of cool. So this has to attach to the baby. So my baby, I've used this baby many times for this project. So you can kind of see where the belly button would be. That's where we're going to tape this on. So taped to our baby, right? Next, we talk about our placenta. These are pre-moistened and it comes in a two pack. Um, I really like the ones that have the scratchy on the outside or the scratchy on one side and then the soft on the other side because surprisingly the soft, more spongy side is very, very similar to what an actual placenta looks like and even kind of feels like. It's a little thicker and tougher and meatier, but really it looks like this. However, 
a placenta is not a sponge. It's somewhat of a filter, but not really. It's, it's really a housing place for the mother to squirt in blood into this kind of shared space of blood. And then the baby has little avioli finger, finger like projections that go down into that lake of blood. And then there's a transfer of nutrients between a, a, a barrier that's like one cell thick. So it's this transfer across that, but there's no sharing of the blood. So it is true that more gets to your baby when you're pregnant than when you're breastfeeding. Like there's a lot more filtering that happens because the baby's not doing any of the filtering itself when it's in utero. When the baby gets older and is on the outside and you know the baby's own liver and kidneys are starting to work and metabolize things, it's different. But when you're pregnant, the placenta isn't a filter and it's not a sponge. So we talk about that and we talk about like how that exchange happens. And we also watch a con video that goes through and explains it like really thoroughly. I was drawing all this and explaining it. Um, but then I found the con video and was just like, oh, the Khan Academy video, which I'll link down in the description. One of the reasons why we go through all of this and we build this project and we, we talk about these things is that our bodies already know how to do this. Our bodies know how to grow a baby, grow an umbilical cord, grow a placenta, and the majority of the time it works. Like we're all here, right? We would have died out as a species if we didn't know how to do this well. So we talk about that and how we don't have to think about doing this. Like we don't have to think, oh, I need to exchange nutrients with my baby or, oh, I need to, you know, whatever, like, you know, support my baby. I have to grow. It, you, we don't think about it. It just happens. Our bodies are brilliant and it knows how to do it. So then we talk about trust. How can we trust our bodies to birth these babies that we know how to grow? Like if we know how to get this kind of complexity right almost all the time, then we can birth our babies. Like that's, it's to build confidence and it's to understand the things that are actually going on in your body. Um, I found it, sorry, that's so loud. I found it very comforting um, to be able to kind of picture what was happening so that when I was feeling fear and feeling anxiety, especially in birth, I could picture and think, okay, my baby's moving down. And those sensations I felt are, you know, maybe my baby turned or moved and is trying to navigate my pelvis and the pathway. And, you know, the pain has, it's productive. And I could kind of picture in my mind all the things that were happening and like appreciate it instead of just being afraid of it. Like it wasn't unknown. It was a known that I could embrace the best I could. Okay, so these sponges are pre-moistened. So we have to put some duct tape around it so the rest of this stuff can stick to it. I love seeing what tape people choose and which partner does more of the work and what partner, um, whether it's the mom or the dad or the partner or whatever, like who, who chooses to do the taping and who chooses to do like the supervising. That's <laughs> always like this kind of incentive, interesting thing about doing this for me. Okay, so we have a baby, we have an umbilical cord, and this has to attach to a placenta. So we talk about placentas and the size and the variation. I have not seen one that's shaped exactly like this, but I have seen some oblong ones. I've seen heart-shaped. I've seen perfectly round. I've seen bilobes. I've seen all kinds of variation, and they were all very normal. Like, they worked. They grew babies. They were exactly what they needed to be. The same goes for insertion of the umbilical cord into the placenta itself. Sometimes it's on the edge, sometimes it's anywhere around there, right? So we'll put it kind of just off, not quite in the middle, but close to the middle, just because that's what I feel like. So we have a baby, we have a placenta. This placenta is attached to the inside of the mother's uterus and where that is attached. So this is where we would talk about that too. Sometimes it's attached to the fundus or the top of the uterus. Sometimes it's attached to the back of the uterus, the posterior part of the, of the uterus. Sometimes it's an anterior placenta and people who have an anterior placenta where it's attached in the front, sometimes they don't feel their baby's kicking until a little bit later because the baby might be kicking that placenta and the placenta doesn't have any nerves. There's no, like you can't feel it when things are happening to it. It's just big and squishy, right? 
So we talk about that too, like where it's at. Okay. Ooh. Next, we have our amniotic sacs. There are two amniotic sacs. There's the amnion and the chorion. So two trash bags. The amnion is on the inside. That is what faces the baby and faces the amniotic fluid. The chorion faces the mother's side and the chorion is loosely adhered to the inside of the uterus. So when the mother gives birth and then births the placenta after the baby comes out, there's still, so it's very much like a big period. It's very much like a menstrual cycle and that big bleeding where um, the inside of the uterus sloughs off. So this detaches from the inside of the uterus, that, that chorion, and then also the placenta detaches. So you have a lot going on in there. It's very much like that, just more bleeding. Okay, and then of course, this is always the funny part with every single class. Uh, it's just, I don't know, so counterintuitive. We're gonna put our baby in our plastic sacks. She just don't do that in real life, right? Baby goes in there, umbilical cord goes in there, and the baby's side faces down, and the mother's side faces out. This is the tricky part. It's not super elegant. It's not super pretty. And this is also insightful <laughs> to my students and the people who are in my class. Um, it's interesting to see who needs this to be perfect and who doesn't and whether it's uh, the partner that does it or it's the mom that does it. Like it's, I don't know, that kind of stuff's fascinating. So what we're gonna do and what we talk about in class, actually that's a little big, is we're gonna attach these two, so you hold them together, and we're gonna attach these two to the outside edge of the placenta. That's where it's attached on a real placenta. So we're gonna mimic that. It's tricky. It's easy. I don't care how it looks. Some people, I don't know how they do it, but they make it look so neat and tidy and it just blows me away. The, the key to this is to gather it because you have all of this that has to go around a smaller diameter here. So if you gather it and create some little pleats and then tape that down. So while this is going on, we're talking about nutrient exchange and we're talking about trusting your bodies and we talk about how you're feeling right now, just the conversation really flows. And the conversation is usually different for each class. And we talk about, like sometimes it just goes off on a duct tape rant because duct tape's off. Watch the, after we do this, we watch the Khan Academy video where he goes over the anatomy of the placenta and the nutrient exchange. And I used to draw that out and I used to do it. And then I found the video and was like, oh, he does it just, it's just right there. It's so concise and so good. And yeah, so we do that. So I'm almost finished. This is the part probably that takes the longest. And it's, you know, that's, it's kind of crazy looking. Okay. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of space, just a teensy bit. And this is tricky and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But we can blow some air in there to make it puff up a little bit. But it's tricky. You gotta do it just right. You make all kinds of faces while you're doing it. Okay. Oh, I was not prepared. I'll have to do it. Again. Oh no, maybe it'll stay a little bit. So, you know, it's filled with fluid, with amniotic fluid. Amniotic fluid is clear salt water 
it's it's saline it's just salt water but we're using air okay so you have a uterus that is attached to the inside of mom and all of this amniotic fluid and baby and umbilical cord are on the inside right this is all attached so right now she is exchanging nutrients and oxygen with the baby and baby's in there swimming around all over the place right labor starts it may start with the water breaking it may you, your waters might not break until you're pushing like some babies are born in call and they come out in the amniotic sac and then it breaks and there's baby so there's a wide range of of variation like very normal variation so we are going to break the first one break the second one water broke what time did it break how much amount so taco is the acronym time amount color is it clear it should be clear it should just be saline you know salt water um time amount color odor if it has an odor then that is worrisome like that could be sign of infection so you would want to call your care provider for that okay so still this is all attached the placenta is still attached baby's still in there your water breaks fluid is coming out um, it continues to come out. You continue to make more amniotic fluid and it continues to leak. That's like some people are very shocked to find out. They're like, oh my gosh, it keeps coming out, keeps coming out. I thought it would break and then it would be done. No, it's kind of messy. Like birth, birth is a messy thing. So baby is, we're at the end. Push, push, push. Like, where's my other? Hopefully, let's see what I got coming out here. Hopefully your baby's coming out head first. And that would be something that more than likely your care provider would know. But baby chooses. So just like baby's choosing how to come out, baby chose to come out how they were. Okay, so baby's crowning, push, 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 out comes baby, okay? All of this, the placenta and the amniotic sacs and the umbilical cord to the baby, all of this is still attached. You just have a baby on the outside, right? So the amniotic, or I'm sorry, the, um, umbilical cord is still pulsing when the umbilical cord is exposed to air and temperature change it gives the signal that things are have changed and it needs to stop pulsing and stop transferring the blood which belongs to baby that's in the placenta it transfers that blood to baby right so we wait it's called delayed cord clamping so we talk a lot about that at this point too so moms are still holding their placenta to their bellies right and baby's on the outside Eventually, even if you left everything intact and did not clamp and cut the cord, you would, especially having baby on your chest and on your belly, it's gonna create oxytocin and oxytocin is what makes your uterus contract. So that's gonna cause your uterus, it's gonna signal it to let go of the placenta, let that shear off and detach, and then push that out. There are no bones inside the placenta. It's squishy, it doesn't hurt when it comes out. The contractions to get it to come out that's pretty uncomfortable, but it's also very necessary and it's not anything compared to what you've already felt, right? So you push, 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 out comes your placenta and you would have this still attached, all of this together, if you didn't clamp and cut the cord, right? So then it's time to clamp and cut the cord. You would clamp, there'd be like hemostats or one of the little plastic clamps here, right? partner, mom, whoever, I've actually gotten to cut a couple of cords and it was so special and it just, I loved it. It was just wonderful. It just made me feel so special because I didn't clamp and cut the cords for my own children. So to be able to do it for doula clients, it was lovely. So, you know, mom's still holding her baby, right? Dad clamps the cord. There's no nerves, no, no nerve endings in any of this. So it's not painful, right? And then you have a free baby and you have a, a little stump of the umbilical cord, which a week, two weeks-ish, it falls off on its own. And then you have your free baby. So we go over this and talk about all of this in class. And I get to do it again tonight with all of my lovely students. Let me know if you have any projects like this. I will post a link to the Khan Academy video of the placenta and that nutrient exchange. And it's just a fantastic video and it's only about 10 minutes. Um, check out my other videos. Let me know what you do with your childbirth classes. And thank you for watching. Bye.